that also the minor injuries were treated there as well. And in the second little room, there's a German soldier, and it represents that we were alive with Germany before that. And uh, this kitchen here is the only kitchen of the whole hospital. And you can see for one kitchen it's not a big one and not very well equipped. And it's because that this hospital was uh, always supervised by another hospital, which is uh, called St. John's Hospital. So every food, medicine, bandages, everything arrived from the St. John's Hospital. So this kitchen was only a kitchen. That's why it's really small. And on the other side of the kitchen you can find some little stairs which would lead us up to the rooms of the nurses and the doctors, but uh, these are really small, that's why we can go up. But during the tour, if you see these little stairs, it's always the rooms of the nurses and the doctors. And uh, still on your right side, you can see these green vehicle lockers where they store food bed sheets, blankets, but mostly the personal belongings of the patients. And above the lockers, you can find some green panels, which is the part of our ventilation system, because uh, since we are underground, there is no natural air moving, so we use a machine to change the air every day. And uh, we still use the original one, by the way, that we will see later. Did the doctors and nurses live here? Uh, yes. They lived here. Yeah. And uh, here you can see a little scene about how the corridors look like during the Second World War, especially during the time of siege of Budapest, which happened in the last year of the World War, because this hospital originally built for only 60 people, but during the siege, six, seven hundred patients were in this hospital at the same time. So it was extremely overcrowded and patients were everywhere. And when the hospital got uh, completely full, they put the patients into the natural cave system around the hospital. And the next place is the emergency section and the taller ones just care for this real. Mm -hmm. As you can see, this is the emergency section, so the place where the more serious injuries were treated. And also they prepared the patients to operating in these rooms, but uh, operating never happened here. It's in uh, the next room, the operating theater. But also if you take a look above these uh, white lockers, you can find a picture of a doctor who was called Dr. Zebri Gerandrash, and he was the only doctor of this whole hospital worked here four times when it was opened. He was the only one who came back during that time of the revolution. And uh, the next room is the operating room.
So um, this is the operating room. And you can see this room is uh, bigger than the other ones before. So that's why they decided to put another operating table here so they could do two surgeries at the same time, which uh, obviously not allowed and wasn't allowed for certain reasons, but with hundreds of patients it was really needed. And if you take a look to the right side, you can find uh, autoclaves on the other side of the glass wall. There are sterilizing machines and by the help of hot steam, they could sterilize the medical tools and the bandages. And uh, also you can find a shoe in the corner of the operating table, which is on the right, between the two doctors about the table, you can find a shoe. Did you find it? Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's an orthopedic operating table. They put a broken leg into the shoe and by pulling it, the broken bone could jump back to the original position, which was uh, really painful, obviously. And this time they, they used only chloroform to put the patient to sleep, which was not the healthiest way either. But uh, otherwise it was a really modern and well the hospital in the 40s. Did they get the equipment from the hospital then? Sorry? Did they get all the equipment from yeah, the Yeah, from the St. John's Hospital. Yeah. Yeah. And after the, it was closed, uh, they brought them back. And when it became a museum, we brought them back to the St. John's Hospital. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, here it's an uh, x-ray room on your left. showers and uh, these two showers here are the only ones that they built in the whole hospital so they built only two showers which I think for 60 people not enough either but uh, it wasn't a big problem because during the Second World War German soldiers wanted to build a barricade around the castle district and uh, while building it they accidentally blown up the main water pipe therefore there was no water for weeks in the hospital what about the nurses and the doctors uh, they stayed here, yeah, because uh, it was the safest, because it's underground. So they stayed here in these uh, really small uh, rooms with their families, too. And uh, in these white cupboards, you can find our medical tools exhibition. All of them is original from the 40s up until the 80s. Most of them were used here. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think these are the scariest ones, if you're interested. <laughs> What did they use for uh, pain relief? Um, I think there is other many kind of painkillers, not that many kind of, but a few kind of uh, painkillers, and they use chloroform mostly. So. Yeah. So uh, this room is ward number three because this hospital had only